Hello guys and welcome back to my channel History, Memorial and Crime. I'm Steve. Today we've come to St Mary's Church at Copythorne. We're here to see the memorial plaque for Milvina Dean, the last living surviving person of the Titanic. Um, unfortunately she passed in 2009 but she was the last survivor to live. Um, she was only nine weeks old when she was actually on the Titanic, but nevertheless, she was still there. We're going to go off and find her grave now. She was cremated, so we've got to go and find her little stone somewhere. Um, I'm not sure quite where it is yet, but I have an idea. Um, and while I'm on my way there, here's a little bit about her. She was born in Branscombe, Devon, and named Eliza, or Elizabeth, Gladys Milvina Dean on the 2nd of February 1912 by her father Bertram Dean and her mother Georgette Dean also known as Etty. She had an older brother who was born in 1910 named Bertram also after his father. Melvina's father Bertram was born and bred in Branscombe in Devon. He moved to London as a young adult where he married Melvina's mother Etty. The couple owned and ran a public house in London for several years. The Deans decided to emigrate to the United States. They were planning to move to Kansas where Bertram had relatives and his cousin owned a tobacco shop that he was going to co-own. Bertram sold the public house and purchased three tickets for his family costing £20 and 11 shillings, a little under £3,000 in today's money. Before leaving the United Kingdom, the Deans paid a visit to Branscombe to say goodbye to their family and while there, Etty Dean gave birth to Milvina. Now here's the thing, the Dean family was supposed to cross the Atlantic on a different White Star ship but a coal strike led to the cancellation of their original voyage. White Star offered them third-class tickets on the Titanic instead. April 14th, 1912, her father felt the collision with the iceberg and after investigating, returned to his cabin telling his wife, Etty, to dress the children and go up on deck. Milvina, her mother and her brother were placed in lifeboat 10. Her father Bertram sadly did not survive and his body, if recovered, was never identified. Once it was clear her husband Bertram had not survived, Etty Dean, like so many other widows left by the Titanic disaster, decided to return to the United Kingdom. Before returning, they stayed in hospital for two or three weeks to recover a little. Because Etty had nothing left, no clothes, no money, and Etty was so heartbroken at the loss of her husband, she just wanted to go home, so then they returned to England. The White Star Line offered Etty and her children passage back to Southampton in England aboard the RMS Adriatic. Once back in Southampton, Etty decided to stay in Southampton and start a new life for her and her children. Eventually, Melvina attended Greg's school in Southampton. In her younger years, she didn't know she was on the Titanic and only found out when she was eight years old when her mother got engaged again to another man. As an adult, Melvina worked for the British government during World War II drawing maps and later served in the purchasing department of a Southampton engineering firm. She worked there as a secretary until her retirement in 1972. Melvina never married and never had children. Her father died on the Titanic. Her mother died on the 16th of September 1975 aged 96. Her brother died on 14th of April 1992 aged 81 and on the 80th anniversary of when the Titanic struck the iceberg. Melvina died of pneumonia on the 31st of May 2009 aged 97. She was cremated and on the 24th of October 2009 her ashes were scattered from a launch at the dock in Southampton where the Titanic set sail. Since October 2007, Melvina had been the last Titanic survivor. And Melvina's plaque is just through here. Somewhere. That looks like it just there, actually. It reads... Ah, yeah, Melvina Dean... 2nd of February 1912 
to the 31st of May 2009 and down here it says hard to see the youngest and last Titanic survivor the plaque apparently was a memorial that was carried out in June as I said before her ashes were scattered at sea on a motor launch um, where the, uh, the Titanic sailed from so the plaque that's here is um, a memorial plaque where her family had a private um, ceremony um, for her um, which took place around about June I've heard rumours that there are some ashes in there but I can't find anywhere that's documented that says there's ashes there um, it only says her ashes were scattered at sea um, by the docks there where she left on the Titanic incidentally if anyone wants to come here and uh, that does gold leafing and maybe gold, gold leaf those letters or knows how to do anything like that it's just a thought but since 2009 it's uh, it's not looking too good really but rest in peace Malvina and hopefully you'll never be forgotten it's a nice little church here, St Mary's, very small but it's lovely and it's, it's nice to be able to remember these people she's the last Titanic survivor there was the ship's deteriorating and it's nice to just to be able to remember I'm a great history buff myself love anything to do with history so doing graves like this suits me down to the ground I just feel that people like this shouldn't be forgotten they shouldn't be forgotten at all and it's nice to be able to remember them and that's that's why we do these videos um, it's not to gloat it, it's to remember them and uh, this is very very uneven I'm hoping we're not going to get any bloopers um, coming up soon there we go yeah um, I've tried the church already and you it, it, it's not accessible you can't get in there which is a shame but they're all locked up these days because of um, people stealing everything yeah um, so um, with that said I bid you farewell